That's not a good angle. That's not a good angle for that. All right. Look like Jessica Lunt was first. We got to email her a cookie. Yeah, baby. Here they come. Jumping over the tables and stuff. Trying to get up in here for this live stream that I'm doing. Playing leapfrog over their kids. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Need like need one of them in the back of the head. Bam. Oh, kid be like, eh. Hey. It's like you'll understand one day, son. When you're a little bit older, you'll realize how awesome Zoe is, and you'll be hopping over stuff too to get to his show. Somebody's a little full of themselves today. Parking their cars like they don't even want. They don't even want to park their car in the garage. Just gonna drive it like trap. Just drive their car straight into their living room. Ah, Mm. Put the TV on, honey. I'm home. Where's my sandwich at? Uh, man. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to do this with me? I'm, I, you guys have noticed. I, 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 I'm, I guess I'm like doing a, a, a random uh, uh, online stream. It's Monday. It's Monday evening. It's supposed to. It's kind. It's kind of hard for me to. Uh, it's kind of hard for us to get. Um, to get on at six o'clock on Sunday, y'all, and uh, you know, by the, and we already know that, like on the East Coast, you know, we got, you know, we got your friends, we got our friends on the East Coast. Uh, it may be a little difficult for them to, uh, you know, stay up with us, you know, as we go a little bit later, you know, like three hours ahead and stuff like that. If my math is correct, I don't pride myself as being very good at math, but I think I can, you know, I think three hours. Yeah, it turns out if I go on at six, they were there at nine, right? Yeah. Sunday night. Okay, and on a Sunday night, so you know what? Hey, if, we, if we're going to do it on a school night, we might as well just do it on Monday. And on Sunday, we, we can't get on earlier than 6 as it is. So, uh, so we, we may switch to Monday. We're going to try Monday night out. And we thank you all so much for hanging in there with us. Whatever day we choose, those who, uh, who step in with us, you want to hang out with us for a bit as we get this fellowship on. So maybe like, you know, doing Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, we'll see how that works out. And hopefully, uh, my transmission holds up. So we're hoping that those uh, them gremlins don't be jumping in and like stomping on my transmission. <laughs> man, that's irritating. Cause we'd be we'd be flowing, man. We'd be getting, you know you know it'd be good. It's good too. And the devil hates it. He hates it that it's so good. Holy Spirit be all up in here, man, conducting this whole thing. And he get mad. Devil get all butt hurt. He says I'm gonna pull the plug on y'all. Yeah, right. He don't like it. That's all right. The Lord is going to have the last word. Can you dig it? I knew that you could. <laughs> dig it. Get all of it. Dig it like a, a like a three-year-old trying to get him the, the biggest. Never mind. No. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> anyway, all right, y'all. Welcome to my Bible trip. You guys ready to trip out on the mind-blowing word of God? I am. Keeps me tripping out all the time. That's why I'm so weird. <laughs> Y'all like it. No, <laughs> well, we tolerate it, so we tolerate your your weirdness. I don't blame you. All right. So, can we do this? Can we can we get our can we get our humble cap on? <laughs> like you, what you mean like the the hat that you got on, Zoe? Yeah. Uh yeah, I guess you gotta be a humble dude to make fool out of yourself with that hat on. Hey man, my hat is fly, dude. <laughs> You know, I'm still trying to figure out if I want to wear the hat with the up collar thing. I, I, that's kind of, you know, that's that's kind of fly, man. I, I look good. I'm so, all right, all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it just like that. So anyway, y'all, let's get our humble on. Let's get humble here, and let us welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's set the stage. I'm just opening that, man. The main, the, the, uh, it's time. It's like it's, it's, this is better. This is better than Elvis coming into the building. It's the Holy Spirit. Let's get the Holy Spirit up in here. Lord, have Your way. May Your truth. Only be spoken. Don't let this knucklehead get in the way of what, what, what you're going to say to us. Let your truth only be spoken. And uh, may it be receptive uh, by those. May your truth be received. May nothing get in the way. No other influence get in the way of what it is that you want us to know. We welcome you, Lord. We thank you. 
We just want to have that attitude of gratitude. We want your healing word to go forth. We want to be that salt and light in the world. We want to be that salt that preserves. We want to be that salt that makes it flavorful and tasty for people to crave your word, crave your truth. Be that light that lights the way and not blinds people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Holy Spirit, have your way. Your healing word is what we need. We want to pave the way for your coming. We want to talk about if we're going to make America great, er, America's great. It's a good place. We can make it greater. And we got to put kingdom for a country to make that happen. Amen. It's your healing word that's going to do it. Yes. So through all, we don't, we don't, we're not praying for, for, for uh, everything to be easy, but we are praying for your strength and your wisdom to deal with this world that gets rough. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Father. Have your way. We are at your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do this. Can I get amen? Amen. Let's rock, y'all. Where we at? Dang it. We just supposed to know, so why you keep asking us? Just just seeing if y'all paying attention. All right. Okay, okay. So you are at John Four. You got your book? You got your your, your iPhone? So you can like do it. Um, oh, no, no, Pastor. I'm, look, I'm not calling myself Pastor. I'm just talking about like y'all being in church and you talking to your pastor. Right? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not looking online and Facebook and stuff like that. I'm actually leaving the Bible with you. All right. You can, or you can actually, it would be funny. It's like, tape, tape your phone into your Bible like this and you could be like looking like you're studying the word yeah. while you're actually online, like, you know, looking at <laughs> Facebook and stuff like that. I mean, even though you'll have the faith, you'll have the, your phone glow on your face. You know, and the pastor looking at you say, look, I know you got your, that's not like the light of the word making your face glow. Dang it, I know it's your phone. <laughs> Trying to fool me. Okay. Four. All right, y'all. Now, Yeshua knew that the Pharisees heard that he was making, that he was making and immersing more disciples than John. Ooh, ooh competition going on there. Although Yeshua himself was not immersing. His disciples were. Well, that would explain how he's able to have more people baptized than John. Jesus had like a, a dang baptism assembly line going. <laughs> it's like, okay, you go ahead and pray to me, and you go ahead and dunk him. You, you know, you dry him off. And it's, it's like he had it. It's like he's like the he's like the the freaking uh, pr uh, uh, pre precursor to Ford. You know, he had his own you know baptism assembly line going. And uh, so let me see. And so he left Judea and went back again to the Galilee. Now, one would wonder, it's like, well, Jesus, what's up, man? How come you didn't baptize him? Why are you having your disciples baptize him? And uh, I, if I may speculate, I think the reason why uh, uh, Jesus wasn't baptizing folks was because they would get a big head about it. It's like, it's like, okay, they're getting baptized by disciples and stuff like that. And you see something getting baptized by Jesus, and then they're hurting the disciples. Says, I don't want to be baptized by you. I don't want to be baptized by Jesus. <laughs> Get out of my way. I want, I want the real baptism. It's like, and, or, or they be getting, getting baptized by other disciples and not baptized by Jesus. They see people getting baptized by Jesus, and the ones baptized by Jesus get all haughty about it and stuff like that. It's like, that's right. I got baptized by Jesus, and you didn't. You got that bargain brand baptism. I got the name brand baptism, baby. I'm, it's like they be like sporting like Louis Vuitton. You got some artificial baptism going. I got little see, 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 You see the sewing on it? That's Louis Vuitton right there. That's that's real stuff. I don't know what you got. You got some like you know, some some welfare baggage on you. That's what you got. I, I got I got the real deal. So Jesus probably to avoid all that, he just probably supervised the baptism and let the disciples go ahead and baptize, and he wasn't the one who was doing it. So that, I'm I'm just speculating. Bottom line is that you're gonna hear the word of God first. That's what we do. You're gonna say it. You know that's what we do. Chapter by chapter, verse by verse, you'll hear the word of God first. All right. Let's see. Um, but we have four. Four four, but he indeed, but he needed to pass through Samaria, so he comes to a Samaritan town called Shechem, near the plot of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Interestingly enough, Joseph uh, means multiplier, but it also means remover, hmm. which is kind of like a precursor to Jesus, who is a multiplier. You know that bread and fish, Jesus multiplies things. He's also the remover. You better hope that you're on his removal list. You know that rapture thing? We want that ride. You want that ride. The electric exodus, baby. All right. Let's see. So uh, where was I at? Dang it. All right. Now, Jacob's well was dark. So Yeshua, exhausted from the journey and sitting by the well, 
it was midday. So giving you an idea of Jesus' humanity. So when he says he's fully man and fully God, he ain't kidding. Brother, get tired sometime. All right? Let's see. Um, a, Samaritan, a Samaritan woman comes to draw water. Give me a drink. <laughs> Jesus, that's just mad shit. Jesus just chilling. Yo, yo, give me a drink. <laughs> Uh, which is, you know, uh, that just, just kind of like makes me flashback. It's like, you know, it's just, he's going to have this encounter with this woman who's going to be receptive, right? He's going to say, give me a drink. And she's going to be receptive to it. He's, she's going to like be open to having a conversation with him. And so it reminds me of um, uh, the servant of, is it, it's the servant of, uh, not the servant of Isaac, but the servant of, when he went to go hear Rebecca, right? Oh, yeah, the servant. Yeah. What's going to, it's like he's looking for the woman who's going to be receptive when he yeah. says, "Give me a drink." He's, he's looking, right yeah, yeah, okay, okay. He's he's looking for the one who's going to be receptive. She's going to give him some water. He's going to give some camel some water, right? So that's it's it's kind of like you know this is kind of like a a, a follow up of that, you know. So Jesus kind of got the same thing going. I'm looking for the person who's going to give me some. I'm going to ask him for some water, and they're going to be receptive to what I'm going to have to say to him. All right. Let's see. So remember, guys, that's what we'd be trying to do. Looking for those pictures in the Old Testament that draws the picture of Christ. All right. Let's see. Um, mm, mm, mm. Give me a drink. <laughs> like Yeshua tells her. For his disciples had gone away to the town to buy food. Then the Samaritan woman tells him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jewish people, don't deal with Samaritans. They think, uh, you know, Jews, they'd be like, Samaritans, man, they, 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 they have breeds, right? So you know how, like, you know, sometimes there's this bigotry against, like, different kinds of half breeds. So there was this big, it's like, you guys, you guys ain't all the way Jews like us, right? You guys, you guys half stepping. We don't have any respect for you, all right? So there was this animosity between them. Um, let's see. Uh, 10, Yeshua replied to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who is saying it to you, saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living Water. And so that's, this, this reads kind of weird. All right. It reads weird. But I'm going to see if I can, you know, give a clear paraphrase of it. So basically what he's saying is, if you knew that you were talking to God, right, not just talking to the Messiah, but I'm, I mean, I'm talking to you're talking to God right now. If you knew that you were talking to God, this wouldn't the question wouldn't end at me asking you for something to drink. If you knew that you were talking to God, you would be asking me for something to drink. All right. So does that make sense? Or, or how about I put it to you like this? Um, let's see. When Jesus goes to get baptized by John. All right. John knew who he was talking to. That's why John was like, hey, shouldn't I be baptizing you? See, Jesus showed up and says, hey, yo, I need you to baptize me. John's like, yeah, being that I understand who you are, I think it should be you who's baptizing me. So that's the interplay right there that Jesus is trying to say to her. It's like, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking for water from me. It wouldn't be me asking for water from you, all right? So now, but she's opening up. She's receptive. That's why he knows he can have this conversation with her, because he knows that she's going to get it, all right? Okay, just like you're getting it, right? All right, okay. Um, so let's see. Sir, the woman tells him, you don't have a bucket, and the well is deep. Then from where do you get this living water? You're not greater than our father Jacob, are you? Well, being that, you know, I'm kind of like the fulfillment of the whole Israel thing, you know, it's, it's, it's going to click with you in a minute. All right. Remember how we read that, you know, between, you know, Jacob having the dream. I don't want to rehash the whole thing because I did it in an early video. You got it. I, I want to be able to get to the point. Remember Jacob having that dream. Right. And he's Israel. And you got the ladder with the angels going up and down, and he's connected to this ladder because this ladder on the top of it has uh, Elohim at the top of it. So Jesus is letting you know that all this is pointing to him, man, Israel, God, you know, he's that dude. All right. So this is a, an appropriate question for her to ask him. All right. So let's see. Um, you don't have a bucket. You're not greater. Uh, we are. He gave us this well. He drank out of it himself. With his sons and his cattle. Remember when Jacob was like flexing and stuff like that? Removed that stone by himself. Rolled away the stone himself. Because he was trying to flex and impress uh, Rebecca and stuff. Remember that? All right. Let's see. Yeshua replied to her. Everyone who drinks from this water 
will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. All right, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the mystery of that? Okay, there's a couple ways to look at that. So he's saying, you're going to drink for this well, and you're always going to be thirsty. And one, if we're talking about water itself, water helps you sustain the, the finite existence that we have. The water from the Lord sustains the infinite existence that we have, all right? Another way to look at this is that when he's talking about you're going to drink from this water, this water is steeped in tradition, okay? And tradition is going to leave you thirsty. Jesus said, you can go ahead and drink from this water, but you're always going to be thirsty because tradition is not what going to be what fulfills you. Tradition is not what's going to get you into heaven. All right. Traditions, rituals and these and these philosophies and stuff like that. That's not what cuts it. You will always find yourself thirsty. And at some point you are going to, you know, it's, it's not going to sustain you anymore. But the water that I bring you. All right. The water that I bring you, not only am I giving you the water that will, will that will facilitate your immortality, the water that I'm bringing that I will bring you keeps you from thirsting about wondering do I have this right? See, when you're trying to answer the traditions and stuff like that, you're like, okay, well, I've, I've, I've broken tradition somehow, and now I have to pay penance. I have to, I have to stack up my merits to make sure that I'm good enough. You'll never be at peace doing that. You will always be thirsty, wondering, have you done it right? You will wonder, you'll be thirsty, wondering, am I even following the right religion? And if I am in the right religion, am I doing it right? I'm seeing these inconsistencies. I'm seeing these contradictions. I'm seeing, you know, these, these, these discrepancies are in there. You're always going to be thirsty. All right, so this is what Jesus is saying. You go with this, you try to go with these traditions, you're always going to be thirsty. But when you find, when you discover that I am the way, the truth, and the life, when you have that peace, your thirst is gone because you know that you are following the truth, all right? Let's see. The water I give him will become a fountain of water within him, springing up to eternal life. Because when you when you get that word, when you realize who Jesus is, all right, and that and that he is the true quencher of thirst, you just opened up, right? You 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 you're, you're there now. You are you have become you are you you become a new creature, right? Ready for immortality with the Lord. It's like it's, either way, we're immortal. But there's there's like a immortal in paradise, and there's an immortal in a place that's not so nice. All right? You're gonna smoke or shine forever. And so, so those are two of the lyrics for the, for the album that I'm working on, new sledge album coming. Music's done, y'all. Music's done. Just gotta get, you know, hopefully we got this singing thing worked out. And that's one of the lyrics. Smoke or shine. You wanna be the one shining, not smoking. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, so, sir, we at uh, 15. Sir, very good. Who's on top of on, on keeping me on track? You know, I was already there. I beat you to it like the buzzard on family feud. And I got it. All right, sir, the woman tells him, give me this water. I want some. I want some. All right, the woman tells him, give me this water so I don't have to be thirsty and come all the way down here to draw water no more. All right, he tells her, well, Go call. Now, before I say it, it's like, you would think that there's enough. She don't want to go to that well, you know, because they get, she, she get dissed when she go down there, right? You know, it's like, you know, they, you know, because if they be sharing that well, you know, Jews go through there too. And, uh, you know, she don't want to be looked down on. It's uncomfortable for her to have, it's like, not just to get the water, like to go down there, but it's an uncomfortable experience, all right? Because she don't want to be, she don't want to be judged, all right? Not just for not being a Jew, but for her lifestyle, as, as we'll read and just as, as we're going to read right now. He tells her, uh, well, you know, you can go call your husband. Go call your husband. And then come back here. And she's like, uh, I, I don't have a husband. <clears throat> and the woman replied, and Yeshua says, well, you got that right. I, I know you don't. I know you don't have a husband. Okay? So I have no husband. For, uh, Yeshua tells you, you're right. I have no husband. For you've had uh, five husbands. And the man you have now ain't your husband. Ugh. Sir, the woman tells him, I see that you are a prophet. Okay, now let's let's see what why is this important? Okay, let's 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 break this down. Okay, so Jesus says, Go get your husband. Why does he say that? Because she's having relations with this man that is that God designed for a married couple. All right. One, they shacking up, and two, she's putting out. 
Yeah. All right. So and the man should know better now. And, and I ain't judging y'all. I ain't judging because, because ain't, you know, I ain't judging. All right. So thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace for those who have, who have been through that. But now, you know, we understand it's like, yo, you know, this, if we could do it over again, you know, we do it. We do it right. Okay? And uh, and this is important, y'all, because this is something that you want, you know, when, you, when it comes to your kids, you know, I mean, we, you may accept that your kids are grown up and stuff like that. And, you know, they, they have their relationship and they may decide that they want to move in together and stuff like that. You know, deep down, that's not something that you prefer. You may accept it, but you don't prefer it. All right. So, I mean, let's, let's just be real about it. So, you know, and this is, and Jesus is calling them out for it. He ain't judging them. You know, he's just, he's just calling them out. It's like, you know, let's, let's call it what it is. So now why is this important? Now he's going to get down to one of the, one of the distinctions between Samaritans and the Jews. He's going to get down to a distinction about this, like why they have, why, why Jews have this issue with them. Now, this isn't like necessarily like a, a really good thing because it does point to this kind of piety of the Jews, but Jesus is going to really draw a distinction here. Now check this out. She's not married. All right. And she's having and she's shacking up with this dude and she's had five husbands. Now, let's when 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 you when you get a divorce. Right. The way it was when Jesus says, you know, the one who designed marriage, what I put together, let no man separate. OK, when Jesus puts you together, you together and, and, and till death do you part. That's a real thing, because to get a divorce. In the law that the Lord made, divorce was 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 separated by death. So there's really only one thing that could, because Jesus lets you know the only the only thing that's acceptable for divorce is sexual immorality. All right, if you're sexually immoral, and that that takes on a few different connotations. All and we've broken this down before. Sexually immoral isn't just about adultery. Sexually immoral is when you use your when you use your sex to sin against uh, your spouse. Like say, for instance, if you're a male and you're beating on your woman, chances are you're doing that is because you have a male complex and you're trying to dominate over her as a woman. Okay, you belittle her as a woman. This is sexually immoral. So for anybody who thinks that, well, I have a husband that, that beats me, according to the Bible, I should stay with him. No, not exactly because he's being sexually immoral. All right, if he's abusive to you, and this is vice versa. You guys are abusive, and you guys are doing it based on a, a sexual complex. This is sexually immoral, all right? Now I can guarantee you, if you have a, I'm, I'm okay. Guarantee is a little strong. Let me dial it back. I can say virtually with certainty that if you got a man who is beating on you, and he said, "Well, he didn't, he didn't cheat on me," so is that really being sexually immoral? Uh, chances are, if he's beating on you, he's probably cheating on you too. Because if he don't care about your feelings enough to withhold his fist, he don't care about your feelings enough to where he's probably out sleeping around on you too. Same thing with verbal abuse. Okay? If he don't care about your feelings and he's going to curse you until you cry, he don't care about your feelings, chances are he's probably out there bed hopping on you too. All right. Same thing with women. Women got they, they got that forked tongue and they talking to her, talk, talking to their man like he like with no honor. A man who talks to his woman without any security. Chances are he cheating on you. A woman who talks to her man like she has no honor, probably cheating on. Him, OK, so these these things are just opened up. All right. So now in this, but Jesus is saying being sexually immoral, that's that's your grounds for divorce. But really, divorce was handled by death. You cheat on your spouse, that's death. Adultery results in death. All right? So what Jesus, now now one would say that, um, well, Moses wrote, he allowed them to write a writ of divorce. He would give them, you know, exceptions for it. But Jesus is like, yo, yo, you ain't talking to Moses. You're talking to me. Moses wrote down the law. I'm the one who authored it. And I say, I say that marriage, what I put together, no man can separate. So with this woman, he's like, Okay, right now you're committing adultery. That's what you're doing. You're not just shacking up with somebody who committed adultery. You have five other husbands. Why have you had five other husbands? Okay, now according to the law, one of y'all should be dead. This is Jesus talking. All right, you ain't talking to Moses. You ain't talking to somebody who made an exception in a writ of divorce. You're talking to me. 
All right. Now, according to what I designed for marriage, you or them five husbands you had should be dead. Because, see, if she if she was divorced, if they divorced her five times, if she's been five times divorced. That means that, OK, she was probably either she was cheating on them, which is punishable by death or they were cheating on her, in which case each one of them should be dead. See, now people look at the Bible and they think that the Bible is chauvinistic. Because it has all these rules on women concerned to say, no, nah, man, I'll be put to death, too, for adultery. All right. So now here's the deal. <clears throat> if the man was committing adultery on her, this is what this is. These are scenarios. I mean, keep in mind, Jewish women, they had to marry them off quick. Right. They married them young and they married them quick. All right. So chances are you wouldn't go find Jewish women that, were, that weren't married. All right. They, they wanted they, they, they wanted to get, you know, be with a man. Get with a man, you know, so they can get their life going. All right. So if a man committed adultery against his wife, chances are he could only commit adultery with another married woman. Remember what we just said. They got these most of these women, they're, they're married already. OK, they marry them off quick. They marry them young. They marry them quick. All right. So chances are if he cheated on his wife, he, if he cheated on this woman. All right. Those five of them. He cheated on this woman. Chances are he could all he this, this is his selection. He can cheat with another married woman, which is punishable by death by both for both parties, both the man and the woman. We will be put to death. The other option is, is that he must have cheated on her with a virgin. All right. <clears throat> so if he cheated on her with a virgin and if she was betrothed and if he cheated on her, that's death. Okay? If he raped her, death. OK, now, if she wasn't betrothed and she was a virgin and it was proved that it, uh, uh, he forced himself on her, he doesn't get the death penalty. He's forced to marry her. All right. Now, some people think that that's that's, that's cool. But check this out, though. Check this out. The, 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 the standard rule of it is, is if that he rapes a virgin, he has to marry her. That's the standard law. But the father still can say no. But the person who raped the girl, he still has to pay 50 shekels. That's a lot of money. All right. And, and chances are he didn't have that money to begin with. It's probably why he raped her. Okay? He had no business doing that. So, but since he deflowered her, and remember, y'all, virginity was something that was highly prized. So if she lost her virginity, her chances of getting married are greatly reduced. All right. So what's going to happen is, is that he is going to be put in a position where he has to marry her. Now, the father could say, actually, no. But the thing is, is he still owes the father 50 shekels. That's a lot of money. What's, and if he doesn't have that money, guess what? He becomes a bond servant. All right. Now, in the, in the Hebrew culture, they're not supposed to be slave, enslaving each other. They can't force each other into slavery. But he has, but he ain't supposed to be raping each other either. But he done done the deed, and he's got to pay. He's got to do the time if he ain't got that money. All right. So now he's a bond servant. Did I lose transmission? Okay. I'll just 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 check. I gotta check. I can check stuff like that. Okay. All right. I'll get you. And yeah. All right. I'll get you. Okay. <laughs> um. So what the, the deal is is that he's gonna have to work off that debt. OK, he got he's got to work that debt off, which means he makes him a slave. Now, and the father is going to make him a slave to his daughter because this man has interfered with her chances of being married. He has to become recourse for her. All right. So she's going to have to have a man to take care of her. Now, say, for instance, now he, she doesn't have to be bonded to him, but he has to be bonded to her. All right. So now if she finds like if she happens, if she does happen to find a man who still wants to marry her, that's great. But that's that's that that the dude who initially raped her still has to be bond. He becomes he's a bond servant now. He has to still has to take care of her. All right. So he's given up his liberty. He took something from her that he can never give back. So something is taken from him that he can never get back. He can never he can, he'll, he'll spend the rest of his life working off that debt. And if he's and if he's lucky, they won't castrate him and make him a unit. Because I, I imagine the husband won't, will be like, "Yo, 
uh, you're going to be our slave and everything, but I don't want you next to my wife, dude. I don't trust you. Yeah. So we got to do something about that. However, but let's make it clear, in the Jewish culture, they are strictly uh, against castration. So they do not castrate each other in, in the Jewish culture. But it could, I, and I don't know, and if, if, I got, if I got my, um, my Jewish homies in the audience, please correct me. Um, it, it could be a, sense of, a, a situation of, <clears throat> look, you weren't supposed to be committing rape anyway. And being that you forfeited, uh, you, you have committed the crime, you have forfeited your rights. You're going to lose that junk. You abused your privileges with your junk, we're going to cut them off. All right? But castrating bond services or, or, or slaves or, or, or servants or anything like that, that was prohibited. They didn't do that in, in Jewish culture. Uh, it, 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 like, uh, like, say, for instance, uh, with a foreigner, with a foreigner, you know, they would have uh, foreign servants. You know, a foreigner could be a servant, but they still had to be treated and loved as their native born. So they weren't, you know, like slave, like property per se. You know, and there were sanctions on how they were supposed to treat their sla uh, their, sa their slaves and whatnot. Okay, so you know, in that sense, uh, you know, in terms of uh, castration, that might be a whole different dynamic. But in Jewish culture, castration is totally frowned upon. All right, so I hope that kind of gives you guys an idea of the importance of this conversation that Jesus is having with her and, and, and the distinction that he's making between the Jew and the Samaritan. It's like, if you guys were full stepped up Jews, you wouldn't be having no five husbands. <clears throat> Somebody would be dead, all right? Somebody was cheating on, on one another. You either cheated on your husbands five times and have obviously gotten away with it five times and you're, doing, and you're committing adultery now with this person that you're living with, or five different men got away with cheating on you. Six, actually, <clears throat> all right? <clears throat> is that is that the correct math? Is it so? I don't know where the five others. I don't know. I don't know if it's five husbands, including that one, or five husbands plus that one. We'll do the math on that later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so um, let's see. Oh, uh, twenty. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you all say that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Yeshua tells her, woman, believe me, an hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. So this has a couple of different means here. It's like, look, when you realize who I am, it ain't going to matter where you worship. All right? The other meaning is, it's like, yeah, you worship what you don't know. So it's you worship what you don't know. So it don't matter. I don't care if you're worshiping here or if you're worshiping in Jerusalem. You're worshiping the wrong person. All right? So that's, that's a little breakdown of what he's talking, a little paraphrase there for you. Uh, let's see. And you worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. Uh, for salvation is from the Jews. And I'm that dude. Hi there. <laughs> huh? Let's see. But an hour is coming. It's here now. Hi there. <laughs> uh, he's like Washington and welcome back Carver. Hi there. <clears throat> I'm, I'm that dude. Um, date the, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm fine. I can date myself. <laughs> Who are you waiting on for a date? So me. No, I'm playing. Huh? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people. Seeking such people! For those who feel like this whole thing is predestined and, and those who are chosen are already picked. It's like, no, I'm, God is letting you know. I'm looking. I'm looking. All right? I'm looking for those who are looking for me. All right. Let's see. Mm. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Truth. <laughs> the woman tells him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called the anointed one. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Yeshua tells her, hey, I'm that dude. I am he. I am. All right. And he knows that she's going to be receptive to this. While he's having to spend this time with her, she's going to get it. All right. Uh, at this moment, his disciples came back. They were amazed that he was speaking with a woman. Speaking with a woman. It's like, okay, Jesus, hey, that's good, man. It's like, dang, you know, it's all right. Uh, let's see. Yes, none of them said, well, what do you, what do you, what do you want? Or, why are you speaking with her, man? Hey, so they were cool. It's like they didn't come out all bigoted and stuff like that. So why are you talking to her? Or, or chauvinistic? Why are you talking to a woman, Jesus? Why are you talking to a Samaritan woman, Jesus? So evidently, there wasn't this chauvinistic bigotry going on, you know, because they probably, you know, they, 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 the, the, the love of God is obviously rubbing off on them. All right? Okay. So the woman left her water jar and went back to town. 
She tells the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Every it's like, dude, y'all just all y'all had a com your, your conversation was about you sleeping around. That's pretty that was pretty much it. five husbands, that was kind of her life, y'all. So it's like the the things that stick out in her life was that, you know, she sleeps around. She's promiscuous. All right. So <clears throat> tells me everything I ever did. He couldn't did he couldn't be the Messiah, could he? <clears throat> the people left the town and began coming to him. Now, for anybody who tries to say that the Bible is a bunch of chauvinistic, woman-hating garbage, well, you got here, right here, Jesus, he, he basically ordained a woman, a woman, a harlot, no less, to go and report who he is. Just the same way as when the women showed up to his tomb, they were the first ones to show up and realize what had gone on, and they were given the message to go and tell. The women weren't trusted with that. Just like a woman, a harlot, is being trusted to go and tell of who Jesus is. All right? No chauvinism there. I think that's this is beautiful, man. This honors women. Come on now. Meanwhile, the disciples were pressing him. Rabbi, man, eat something. Fix you a plate. All right? But he said to them, I have food to eat that you don't even know about. <laughs> Wait, you holding out on this, Jesus? What you got, man? You got some coupons to a fancy restaurant or something like that? You know what you mean? We just walked all the way in the town. <laughs> Straight up. He said, man, we did all that walking to go get you some food. You already got some food. Man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so the disciples were saying to each other, no one brought him any food to eat, did they? <laughs> Boo, did you have me go all the way to town, man? You already knew you had some food. Why didn't you say something, man? All right. Let's see. Uh, Yeshua tells them, my food is to do with the one who sent me and to accomplish his work. Don't you say four more months and then comes the harvest? Well, look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are white and ready for harvest, okay? So Jesus knows where he's like, man, I'm right here. This is right for the picking, man. We need to go ahead and get, we need to chop it up, like right here. These people are ready. Look at people showing up. All because of what this woman told them. They are answering to what a woman said. So you know that they are hungry for the truth. Thirsty and hungry, all right? So this food, once again, the food is, is the same analogy as the water. You get fed. When you get fed this truth, all right, you won't be hungry wondering, is is this the right religion or is this right religion or is this the right philosophy? Or this? Because all this, all that stuff is always changing anyway. The word of God is constant. He lets you know heaven and earth will pass away. Even heaven. All right. My word is eternal. OK, anything else, heaven and earth, anything involved in earth, eat these philosophies, these earthly philosophies, okay? these other religions made by man. Okay? All that stuff passes away. Jesus don't like religion. He don't like tradition. I want to get a shirt, and you guys better not rip it off, man. I'm trying, I want to get a shirt made. Jesus, the original Freedom From Religion Foundation. All right? <laughs> I want to get that shirt made. I'd, try, I'd like to. All right. Would you guys buy it? Would you, got, would you get it? Would you get it? Would you wear it? I hope so. If so, I'll, I'll get it started, man. And, and y'all can, we can, we can do like a prepay sort of thing like that. All right. Get them shirts made. Y'all be styling. Y'all be looking fly, like me. <laughs> Zoe, you're starting to sound too much like name Joel Osteen, you conceited coop. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. All right. The Reaper. Uh, the Reaper receives a reward and gathers fruit for eternal life so that the sower and Reaper may rejoice together. All right, that's what we want to be. We want to be rejoicing. Jesus and us, y'all, us together. Uh, let's see. For the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you haven't worked for. Mm. Others have worked hard, and you have joined in their work. Who's those others? The prophets, the prophets that were getting killed. All right. So you guys, you guys, you guys right now are following up on that truth that, that these people are kind of familiar with because they, 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 they study their traditions. They study their history and stuff like that. And these things should sound familiar to them. When these disciples are coming and basically painting the picture of who Christ is. 
They're able to do this because of their forerunners, right? Who, who, have, who have recorded this history, who have, who have testified, right? And, and uh, uh, recorded what went down. So this picture of Christ can be uh, painted. So they know who to seek when they see him, right? So it's important. Christians, don't just be reading the New Testament. You gotta read the old, and you got to look at the picture of Christ that it paints, all right? <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, many, <laughs> many of the Samaritans from that town put their trust in him because of the word of the woman testifying. He said, everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they kept asking him to stay with them. Man, hang out with them. King was you're so cool, dude. Just can, can, can you stay over my house? No, he's my friend. He's going to stay over my house. All right. He stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They kept telling the woman, it's no longer because of your words that we believe. We've heard for ourselves. So no longer, meaning that they did believe her. But it's like Jesus came in. It's like, man, it's like it's, we, got the, we got the full spectrum of truth here. It's like you, you, you turned us on to it, and, 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 we, and we were ready to believe. Jesus came in, just validated. It's like we're, we're all in. We're all in now. All right? Let's see. Uh, we've heard for ourselves. Now we know that this really is the Savior of the world. Okay? After the two days, he went on from there into the Galilee. Now Yeshua himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Man, I know that's like. I got I got homies from like 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 school high school and stuff like that. They don't even talk to me, man. They don't know. Man, so man, he ain't nothing. I remember him back in the day. All that school he was ditching and all that stuff, all that knuckleheaded stuff that he was doing. He ain't fooling nobody. I I understand. Man, I knew I knew I knew I knew I knew when he was called. I knew when he was called stereo. Went by that silly nickname. I remember that. Walking around with drumsticks, pink hair, and stuff like. That. Cut off shorts, pull up green socks and stuff like that. Flipping weirdo. I remember him. <laughs> he crazy, crazy if you listen to that dude. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> I laugh at myself from back then. I laugh I'm at myself kind of now. I'm what you looked like <laughs> when you came to the door the first time. My dad looked at you. <laughs> and you loved it. He said, Dad, this is my man. This is my man right here. <laughs> okay. She, she saw something special. It's okay, only be something that the good Lord put in me that she saw. Those burgundy dreadlocks. Right? Oh, man. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay. Where was I? <laughs> uh, now, but, now, remember now, this is what he says. He said a prophet, uh, a prophet has no honor in his own country. That's what he says. But it's, what's going to follow is going to seem something different. Now, y'all, just because he says it, when he says it, he kind of expects people to fix it, all right? So you're going to see kind of like a different attitude. It's like, well, I'm reading on further, so it seems like they do honor him. Even after he just said they have no honor, he said, well, yeah, he said that in hopes that they wouldn't stay the same way. You know, hopefully they will adjust and they will fix it. You know, repent. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to repent, change. If I tell you something, it doesn't mean that you're doomed to it. I hope that you change it, all right? So let's see. Um... Uh, has no prophet in his, I mean, a prophet has no honor in his own country. But when he came into the Galilee, they welcomed him. Okay? For they had seen all he had done at the feast in Jerusalem since they had gone up to celebrate. Celebrate good time, come on. Uh, so he went again to Cana of the Galilee, where he had turned water into wine. Now, there was a nobleman whose son was sick in Capernaum. When he heard that Yeshua had come, from Judea to the Galilee, he sent him, sorry, he went to him and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was about to die. Then Yeshua said to him, unless you all see signs and wonders, you'll never believe. Yep. All right. You'll never believe. All right. So now, once again, Jesus is, is, is shaping these sayings to, to different audiences. Because um, on one hand, he finds it wicked. It's like, y'all who be wanting proof and stuff like that, you're a wicked generation. You want proof? You don't really want proof. You don't. You're looking for stuff to disprove. I give, I'll give you proof after proof after proof, and you guys still don't believe. Okay? So Jesus actually calls that wicked. Sometimes there's a certain audience, there's a certain population who can handle proof. 
Now, I would speculate that that's, he's talking to one of these people right now, as we refer to, we, we, we may see. Uh, unless you see signs and wonders, you'll never believe. And, and Jesus has to be careful how he does this. Okay? He has to be careful how he does this, because remember, the sin that he doesn't forgive is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. What is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when you're given empirical evidence and you try to rationalize it. You try to, you try to reason it away. You try to say things like, well, Jesus did that by the power of Beelzebub. Or, or there was some sort of science that they knew, or some sort of uh, uh, um, um, witchcraft that they knew, or some medicines or botanicals or something that they did, rather than a, facing the fact that God himself intervened and showed them a miracle. When, once that's done, y'all, there's, there's nothing else. What else can God do for you? God has given you the evidence. If you don't want it, God can't, he's not going to try to force feed it down your throat. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. When you're, when you're shown it when, it, when it, when the manifestation is made and you try to reason it away. All right. So in the following scriptures, we get, you know, a, a picture of this because Jesus has to be very careful with how he dispatches a miracle. That's why he says, I can't do miracles in my hometown because they don't believe. Yeah. If Jesus does a miracle in front of you and you don't believe it, Jesus is like, well, what else can I do? You're not going to be happy in my kingdom. You're going to walk right into hell with your eyes wide open. All right. Jesus is it's like uh, Jesus has to consider the kill ratio when he deploys this miracle nuke. All right. So when Jesus hands out a miracle, I like say, because people be wondering, well, Jesus, how come you don't save? How come you don't heal this person? How come you don't do this? And, you know, how come he doesn't do, do that today? Well, Jesus kind of one, he's been there and done that. He got hung on a cross for doing it. All right. Jesus is like, you just going to have to go strictly by faith now. All right, I came and I gave proof. I gave proof and I got killed for it. Now you're just going to have to go off of faith. All right. But the thing is, y'all, in our culture today, it's ripe for people blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Because a person, let's say a person gets healed. They get that miracle healing that they wanted. Right. This isn't God abandoning us. This is this is mercy. Because you may have people who will see this, this life threatening disease get cured that nobody can explain. But you have others. Let's say you might have of uh, this person has 10 people in their family. Right. And this person gets this miracle. And they get that miracle. And you got people in that family who won't believe it, who don't believe it was a miracle. They feel like they can explain it somehow or they don't give the credit to God. We are just blessed with the Holy Spirit. That's one person whose disease got cured. And that might be seven people in that family who's going to go to hell because they don't want to believe. See what I'm saying? So Jesus has to be very careful about how he does this. Because he's a merciful God. He's a just God. But he's not. But, but, a, but for a person that doesn't believe, Jesus ain't going to force them into heaven. All right. So right here, the nobleman said to him, sir, come down before my children dies. Yeshua tells him, go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Yeshua said to him. He believed it and started off while on his way down. His servants met him saying that his son was living. So he asked them. The hour the boy, when the boy began to get better, they said the fever left him yesterday at about the seventh hour. Then the father realized that it was the same hour Yeshua said to him, your son lives. Now, he himself, along with his whole household, Jesus carefully deployed that miracle bomb because there would be no kill rate. There would be no, no, no uh, casualty. All right. Everybody in the household was ready to believe. If there was somebody in that household that wasn't ready to believe, I mean, Jesus has to make it because in war, right, and we're in a spiritual war, there can be casualties. But it's great when you can actually deploy a weapon and not kill like civilians, you know, things like that. Only the ones who are trying to do the killing. So when Jesus does stuff like this, he doesn't want he doesn't want to cost people their salvation. So he has to carefully, he carefully calculates this. He has to be, I mean, he's he's our he's our general, y'all. And we're in a spiritual war. And he has a calculation of how many are going to be casualties in this. This is not so he trust me, he does not want to be the guy in, in the grand scheme of things who has to send that note saying, Hey, your son or your daughter didn't make it. Grieves him to no end, y'all. You know, please don't think that this is something <clears throat> that our Lord takes lightly. Even when he ha even when somebody has to, you know, go to their grave fighting a disease. It's probably because he's 
looking at it, it's like you may be saved at least you know you believe and you may enter, enter, enter into eternal uh, 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 salvation but there may be those who know who knew you and didn't want to accept the miracle that you were given they're going to walk right in hell you know? so Jesus doesn't want to give them that chance to commit blasphemy that chance to commit the sin that's not forgivable all right so Jesus is a very very calculating general He's our he's our high king and priest, and he has he has this worked out, y'all. It's that he is it's that he's there's no abandonment here, none. All right. So let's see. Uh, with his whole household, Yeshua did this as the second sign after he had come again from Judea into the Galilee. Right on, y'all. We got through four. Thank you for hanging with us, fellowshipping with us. All right. Love you for that. <laughs> That is Amen. awesome. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are enjoying these. Please make sure you go to uh, if you want to if you want to support, which I hope you do. Want to leave a tip for the trip? You can visit, you can visit my website, bronzeserpermedia.com. Um, and it's like no, this ain't about being there. Like, ain't about being hunt money. Hunt. Oh no, here comes a collection plate. Oh no, let's run. Like you know, hey, the message is free. Delivering it ain't. All right, just try to keep that in mind. So your support, your support is very much appreciated. Hope you visit me on my website, bronzeserpentmedia.com. I'll go ahead and put it up there in the, uh, in the description box so you can follow the link. And uh, check out some of the work that I have up there. Check out my book, you know, fun, creative ways to, you know, relate the gospel to people. I got my book, The Flood Chronicles. Please check it out. Please visit my Amazon site. And let's increase that rating. It's been, it's, since the last time I asked, it actually increased by two. Yes. Right? Two people went in and left and left a, a, a rating and review, so I thank you so much for that. Let's see if we can get another one. Between now and Thursday, let's see if that can review increase to 11. Just, just one. One. All right? Make sure you check out 20 Pound Sledge, my, my, my project to rock the gospel with. So I thank you guys for who keep on tuning in and help me, you know, get this message out there so we can fellowship, man, and take that salt and light into the world. You know what I'm saying? So Holy Spirit, thank you so much. Trusting you for that shalom. Trusting in you for the and thanking you for the strength, for the wisdom, for the finesse to deal with this world, to be out there and inspire folks, to get people wondering about us peculiar people who are in you. Right? Man, y'all some strange people. You're strange and I like it for some reason. I want to know more. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, we trust in you for that. We just want we want to pave the way for your come. We want to make that harvest a good harvest for you for when you come to do your reaping. So thank you so much, Lord. We give you thanks. Or the blessings that you have, and we want you to just fortify it and just just really enrich that. That, that if we got a heart for gratitude, we want you to match that investment, Lord. Just come in and, and, and make us even more thankful. It's gratitude, y'all. Gratitude is is the, is the key. I know a lot of y'all out there proud to be an American. I'm a proud American. I'm a proud American. You need to start learning to be a thankful American. And when you get that in your head, that is when we will truly make America great. All right. Hey, right, thanks, y'all. And I will see y'all. God bless you. We will see you on Thursday. God willing.